Today we are working Psalm 28. Psalm 28 has a plethora of traditional magical uses to disarm adversaries, to make peace with an enemy, to reconcile with a friend for a safe journey if you're traveling, and also to subdue any attack. Today I'd like to use Psalm 28 to subdue anything that is attacking our peace of mind. So anything that is attacking our peace of mind, we are going to subdue with Psalm 28. We work the Psalms in a very simple, easy, and powerfully effective manner. We take the Psalm in question and we read it all the way through out loud once without stopping. This recitation is known as an incantation. Then after we're done with that incantation, we go back through that same psalm and we consider each verse in turn. And when we consider each verse in turn, what we're doing is we're digging and searching for what we call magic seeds. And those seeds are basically occult hidden meanings within the psalm. And there are an infinite amount of magical seeds in each and every psalm. You can't ever find all of them. But as we find them, we also try to apply what we find to whatever the issue at hand is that we've brought to the psalm. And through doing all of this, searching, digging, and applying, we are in a real sense taking those magical seeds and planting them into the fertile ground of our deep mind, where they take root, they grow, they blossom forth, and then they bear fruit after their kind. And that's exactly what we are going to do together, you and I, right now with Psalm 28. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds, and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands, render to them their desert. Because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them, and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. And with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. We have to orient ourselves each and every time we work psalm magic as to who we're addressing, what the power is. The power of the Lord for a magician might be somewhat different than the power of the Lord for somebody who's religious or superstitious. What we want to look at is that the Lord represents a pregender force that is a singular force that is the one and only force, the one and only power, the one and only substance in all of the universe that is not separate from anything. And Because of the unity of this force, nothing can oppose it. It is all power. And that is why psalm magic for us is so effective and powerful, because there is nothing that can oppose this force. So one with God is a majority in this sense. And God does for us what God does through us. So now we are open and receptive to this magic as we address this force. For us, that's not at all patriarchal. It is a pregender force. It says, unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. So first thing we are talking about is our crying, our supplication. We are making the first move. And that's always what we have to do. We have to be the instigator. We have to be the catalyst. We can't just sit around and wonder why God isn't fixing things for us. That's up to us. We must be the catalyst. Once we open up that line of communication, the nature of this force is responsiveness. But we have to call in order to be answered. O Lord, my rock. The idea of the Lord being our rock is all through the book of Psalms. And the rock meaning that which cannot be moved, that which is solid, that which is secure, that which is certain. 
So there is absolutely nothing about the Lord which is uncertain. And the only certainty that we can be guaranteed is that force. Be not silent to me. So as you can see later in this psalm, we are working with the Lord through what is called an oracle. So we don't want the oracle to be silenced. We want to hear. We want to have a response from this oracle. Lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Now, this is a very common technique in these ancient psalms of bargaining with the Lord. And the psalmist always goes through this bargaining period and then comes out the other side of it, recognizing that bargaining is not necessary. But right now it's, don't you want to help me? Because if you don't help me, then I'm not going to be here to praise you as if the, the Lord was some sort of ego that needed praise. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. So lifting up your hands toward that holy oracle, that is the gesture of prayer. It's a gesture of worship, but look at it magically. What do the hands represent? The hands represent our actions in the world, what we do, our work in the world. So if our hands are not lifted up to the oracle, then what we are doing is not being informed. So in other words, please allow us to be used as the solution, not to contribute to the problem. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity. Now the wicked and the workers of iniquity in this sense are whatever is the issue, whatever is the thing that is causing us to not have peace. But we have to recognize that ultimately those things are in our deep mind. Those are parts of our own ego personality that are there for one purpose. And that's to put sand in the gears, is to try to upset things, is to take us away from peace. That's their entire mission. And that's not something that we are victimized from without. The phone call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> So we have to recognize that at some point in time, we as a species adopted this idea of the demiurge or adopted this idea of the ego and we've become allegiant to it. And what that ego mind is programmed to do is to keep us separate, is to keep us out of our sense of peace, out of our sense of oneness. So. That's what the wicked and the workers of iniquity are. They are, yes, sometimes we can see those people outside of us, and sometimes we can be those people, but ultimately those things are thought forms. And when we can take care of it at the level of the thought form, then we don't ever have to worry about it in physical form. Which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. So we are looking at a lot of the things that we play lip service to. Oh yeah, I want to be peaceful. I want to be wise. I want to be powerful. You see it a lot in our own selves and in other people playing lip service to all this spiritual stuff, but they hang on to these thought forms. They hang on to their grievances. They hang on to ideas which contribute to the chaos that we are asking to be released from. So we don't want to be like that. We don't want to say one thing and do another. We want to open ourselves up to this power of healing and say, infinite intelligence, decide for me. I don't know what anything means. I don't understand any of this because I'm so confused by these thought forms of iniquity, by these thought forms of wickedness, that even when I do my best, I can't help but say one thing and do another. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands, render them their dessert. Now, when we say dessert, we're not talking about their pudding. We're talking about that which they deserve. And so these thought forms deserve to be annihilated. These thought forms deserve to be seen as what they are. And that's nothing. When the light comes on in a dark room, the darkness disappears because that's it's being shown as what it is. And that's nothing. And so these ideas, these thought forms, which are the cause of our lack of peace, which are cause of the chaos that we are asking to be relieved from, are nothing, ultimately. 
because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Anything that's not God doesn't exist. Anything that's not of perfection does not ultimately exist. But we believe it does. We've bought into it. We can't help it. It's not our fault. There's nothing that we have to feel guilty about. It's a very confusing world that we live in. And this world is literally a world of illusions because this world points to everything that is not of infinite intelligence. That's what it's here to do, is here to distract us. It is a projection of the ego mind. And so we can't be expected to learn how to figure that out on our, on our own. And to put that burden on ourselves is not smart because there's no way that we could do that. But we don't have to do that because those thoughts that don't exist as part of the mind of God will be shined away when we ask for it to be that way. We have to, again, make the first move. We have to say, I no longer am invested in th those thoughts. Even those thoughts that I don't think I had anything to do with. Even those thoughts that contribute to stuff that I don't even believe that is part of me. So all of those things that are happening in our lives, which are causing us problems, we say, I don't have anything to do with that. Fine. You don't need to believe that you have anything to do with that. It doesn't matter. But we're still giving those over to infinite intelligence to be shined away. Because ultimately, we do have all power in any situation. And that power is the power of choice, the power of decision. And if we use that power of decision to decide to, to let infinite intelligence be the truth in our lives and to shine away anything that is not like it, then the power of decision is such that it enables us to experience the release of all of that chaos, the release from all of those experiences and ideas which are thwarting our peace. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. If you ask, it is always given. If you ask, you are always heard. If you make that first step, there's nothing more that you need to do but ask and then allow yourself to receive. But see, what happens is we ask, and then we say, oh, wait, 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 do it this way. We ask, and then we try to protect our illusions because we think we know better. So when we are asking to be relieved from those things which are thwarting our peace, we have to allow infinite intelligence to be infinite intelligence and to do what needs to be done in order for us to be relieved from that. We can't say, please help me, and then start directing the show. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. Boy, what a lovely verse. So let's just break it down one line at a time. The Lord is my strength and my shield. If you are looking to infinite intelligence to be your strength and your shield, all that means is that you're looking for truth to be your reality. Anything that's not infinite intelligence is not real. And if we are busying ourselves with that which is not real, then we are busying ourselves with a nightmare fantasy. And then we join together and we all conspire into the agreement that this is the way things are. And then we're real stuck. We are really lost. So if we recognize that's not our strength, this world is not our strength. Our intentions to hang on to this world is not our strength. Our strength is infinite intelligence. And infinite intelligence doesn't want to kill us from this world. It wants to transform our experience of this world so that this world starts to reflect the truth rather than the nightmare. But again, infinite intelligence cannot do anything for us that it doesn't do through us. So we have to be the catalyst for change here. We have to say yes to this. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Again, the same device that's used again and again in the Psalms to put things in the past tense to speed up our results. So when you trust in infinite intelligence, that's what faith means. Saying that when you have faith, you are helped. It is through your faith that your help is manifest. And we know that, those of you that work magic, you can't have a manifestation if you don't have faith in the manifestation, if you don't have faith that it's available to you. 
Now, if there are things in your life which are causing you to lose your peace of mind, rather than you deciding for yourself what needs to be done in order for those things to be alleviated, if you call on infinite intelligence and you have faith that infinite intelligence knows what it's doing, you don't try to micromanage it, then it says you are helped. So what we tend to do is we think that we're smarter than infinite intelligence. We don't necessarily always admit to that or want to look at it that way. God, please help me, but don't be an idiot. Okay, God, don't be stupid. I want it to be this way. And if you can't understand that, I don't know what to do about you, God, right? That's what we do. And so what we want to do hear it saying is trust in infinite intelligence and allow yourself to be helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will I praise him. So let's take that one at a time too. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. So let's reverse engineer it. If you can get your heart to rejoice that your problem is solved, if you can get your heart to rejoice that your peace has been reestablished, that the problem has been taken from you, then you will see very quickly the realization of your desire. So if you go for the heart rejoicing first, the rest of it is expediently taken care of. And with my song, will I praise him? Now you can sing songs, that's fine. It's a wonderful thing to sing, but it's not necessary that you sing actual songs. What the songs represent is how you use your voice and not only your physical voice, but your spiritual voice, meaning where you dwell, what you spend your time contemplating and thinking about. That's your responsibility. If you spend all your days and nights wondering how you're going to get out of this problem and you don't get to the rejoicing part of it, then it's very difficult for infinite intelligence to have a point of entry to do for you what it needs to do through you. But if you can take charge of your own part of things, which is your mind and your words, and start to allow yourself to spend time in coming up with ideas of rejoicing, then your world transforms in a flash. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. You are anointed. You are the chosen one. You are. That's your job. The idea that you're just like one of the masses and that God's got so much on his plate, (laughs) hopefully one day we'll have enough time for you, is so off the mark. The reality is that infinite intelligence is thinking of you right now because otherwise you wouldn't be. So you are a thought in the mind of the infinite. And the idea that infinite intelligence has of you is that it's pleased with you, loves you. You are its anointed, very blessed child of God. That's who you are. You're no less, obviously no more, but you're definitely no less beloved than anybody else. There is nobody more important to you in the eyes of infinite intelligence. And that includes Beethoven. That includes Jesus. That includes Mother Teresa. That includes anybody that you think is really important. Infinite intelligence doesn't see it like that. Doesn't say, yeah, those people get special treatment And when I have time, I'll help you out, but I'm busy. That's not it at all. That the Lord is your strength and the saving strength of the anointed. So if you recognize how beloved you are, that is your strength because you are anointed. You are chosen. Now, the chosen of God are those who choose because God already chose you. You don't have to worry about God's choices here. God already chose you. But God gave you infinite free will. So if you don't choose God, then God just has to hang out and wait until you do. So if you want to be one of the anointed, then you accept that you're one of the anointed already. You don't have to do anything. There's no processing that you have to go through. There's no initiation that you have to go to in order for God to start loving you. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. You are the inheritance of God because God is your inheritance. 
right? You have an inheritance. A lot of people go through life wishing, God, wouldn't it be great if I had a trust fund? If I could just have an inheritance and I didn't have to work all the time and I got what I wanted and it was so easy. Well, you do. You do have one. Infinite intelligence is your inheritance. And when you can really accept that, when you can truly accept your inheritance, you do have the ability to solve problems. You do have the ability to rebuke storms. You do have the ability to heal the sick. You do have the ability to raise the dead. Those are just normal for you because that's who you are. That's your inheritance. So whatever your problems are, they are divinely outmatched by your own inheritance. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. So you're never going to go hungry. You will never be without because you are lifted up forever. Now, what's forever? We know this, right? But we have to remind ourselves forever is the present moment. You are lifted up in this moment. In this moment, you are lifted up into that realm of infinite intelligence, that realm called truth, where there are none of these problems, where you are at peace, where all your needs are met. And all your problems have already been solved in this moment. So you can say yes to that. So now you just keep coming back to the same Psalm again and again. And eventually you're going to get that sense of peace and certainty about whatever it is that you brought to the Psalm. Once you get that sense of peace and certainty, you know that your spell has been cast and then you don't have to work on that thing anymore. You can move on to something else. Thank you so very much for spending some time with me today. I so appreciate you. Until next time, blessed be. Mm -hmm.